if you are curious on the deployment, this is the stuff that I wish I knew before I started. For those of you that watch the show regularly, who do watch the Blind Tasting Show and do listen to the podcast, you'd actually know that I'm studying the, the WSET diploma. Some of you have actually have asked, I'm assuming this is probably the wine professionals out there, or even if you're just morbidly curious. So this is kind of like the first official video in this series, which I think I will uh, get into deeper down the track. I will break down the different units and what I've actually found helpful, interesting, and useful to study during it. Basically, what I'm gonna do is just kind of go through with everybody my experience studying the WSET diploma. Just for reference, I'm not quite completed the WSET diploma, but I hope to finish it in the next six months. I'm four out of six units down. I just need to do the big one, which is uh, Wines of the World, D3, and then also four to five if you are curious on the deployment, this is the stuff that I wish I knew before I started. First one is kind of the most important one. Do you actually want to do this? Look, it might sound a little bit silly, a little bit weird. What are you actually looking to get out of this? And I think that's kind of really helpful to know because it's a really expensive course. You're about to set aside a few years of your life. So if you're a wine industry professional that wants to get to that next level, you know, go down that master of wine path. You want to get to that kind of higher end group buying jobs. So definitely worth thinking about what do you want to get out of this before you even start. If you want to get some experiences that you won't be able to get in other parts of the wine industry, this is definitely a great option for you. On my first day doing this, I was able to taste through every single Penfolds wines with head winemaker Peter Gago. And I think that might just be a bit of a South Australian bias thing because we're so close to that kind of thing but if you were looking for that kind of stuff this is definitely worthwhile but also if you just want to learn more about wine and you actually enjoy the aspect of study if you are someone that really enjoyed university this is another great option for you it's not just the wine industry um, participated degree there are plenty of people that are actually doing the WSET diploma who have no like wine industry background they just love wine in my cohort there's doctors there's lawyers there's people who just bloody love wine but don't have a career in it if you just love being studious and want to kind of fill your time up outside of your regular work to just enjoy wine this is definitely an option for you you have to really commit to this course. You can't really half-ass it. If you half-ass it, you'll get your ass handed to you. And trust me, I found out the hard way. There is a great deal of sacrifice you need to make in your regular life to actually participate in this. Financial sacrifices, personal sacrifices. Say goodbye to many social engagements on the weekend because you just want to learn about German wine law and Spanish wine production. And to be honest, like 90% of the jobs in the wine industry, if you are an industry professional, you don't need this degree to do. It is that upper echelon. If you're just wanting to be a restaurant manager or you're still happy just working on the floor because you've got other passions outside of this don't do it if you really love wine and you really want to kind of you enjoy the aspect of study and you really want to get to that next level in the industry it's definitely worth doing this otherwise don't waste your time don't waste your money I can't stress this enough the next thing I really want to talk about is the cost of actually participating in this it is hellishly expensive. For me personally, over the two years, I've paid almost $11,000. So it is really expensive. Luckily, there are some payment options. In my experience, the third party provided, the vocational provider that's kind of government funded has payment plans. So you can pay as you go. You know, since it is such an industry accredited course and such a powerful thing within the industry, a lot of employers will actually pay this for you or at least subsidize it. So, I mean, if you're in the wine industry, ask your employer to see if they can kick in something. Otherwise, if those options aren't available to you and you don't have $11,000 Aussie to drop on a course, stockpile those pennies, like put it away and you get some preliminary study done. Otherwise, you know, you don't want to go to the last resort, which is talking to the bank. But the other thing that we need to talk about, the cost of your study materials, and I'm not really talking about books and pencils and pens and notepads and things like that. You have a very expensive study material in this course, and that is the reason you got into it in the first place. Wine. You are going to taste a stack of wine. You're going to taste so much wine, you're not going to know what to do with it. And some of it's going to be really expensive. You are going to need to understand Bordeaux, Burgundy, Champagne, Barolo, Rioja, expensive wine. If you taste a Barolo, they are asking you, can you identify that this is Barolo? Can you identify this is a high quality wine? So the best way to understand how high quality the wine is, 
is to taste it. So you're gonna have to drop some cash on that. In Australia, those wines are really expensive, so you definitely need to budget for those wines. And also try go to wine bars that are local to you that are pouring these kind of wines by the glass, even under Corrigan, that's gonna save you some money. You might just be that person at the bar with a notepad, you know, tasting the wines and going through the, the Wusset systematic tasting approach. So you will be writing down all your flavor descriptors, the level of acidity, the tannins, the alcohol, and you're gonna be that person at the bar. So that is an affordable way of doing it rather than spending $1,000 a bottle of Bordeaux, maybe just spending a hundred and something bucks on a glass, that might be a good approach for you. So definitely worthwhile. The resource aspect, that's all kind of covered. You know, the cost aspect, your time aspect, you, you know what you kind of need. The next thing I think we should talk about is find out how you study before you start studying. Everyone has a different way that they study best and the way they learn best. I think identifying how you do that before you actually start this course is going to help you so much in the long run. Some people retain information better with words. Some people do better listening to podcasts. Some people wrote learning works really well. Uh, I'm definitely one of those people. Uh, then there's visual learners. Everyone has these different tricks where their brain actually retains information a little bit better. So I can't recommend enough doing a quiz before you actually start studying to find out what your actual natural study habits are. Mm -hmm. For me, it really, really reinforced what I kind of already knew and what I need to work on. So my natural studying, I am what they call an exam winger. I just try to retain as much information as possible and then when the exam actually arrives, I just go for hell for leather and give them a best crack. As I kind of mentioned, rote learning does really well for my brain. So basically the way I study, I go through the textbook, I make notations on the textbook and then I go through my notes and I make flashcards on that and then quiz myself and then kind of that's gonna be the best way that I can retain the information as best as possible. So I am writing it down multiple times and then speaking about it and then that's staying in my brain as much as humanly possible. That just works for me. So find out how you work best. That's absolutely, for anyone studying, that's the best way to go. You'll need to know how you study best because do not underestimate the workload. The volume of this workload is massive. Your expected knowledge is absolutely huge. And the theory exams in particular, they're gonna ask you anything in the respective category. Dedicate a really good amount of time each week, whether it's a little bit every day, whether it's a large chunk on a couple of days or the weekends. It was instilled onto me by pretty much everyone who runs the course or has done the course that you cannot cram for this. There is just too much to know. So plan accordingly. You're expected to know everything about Bordeaux growths and then you're gonna be randomly asked about Greek wine. So you need to have everything covered. You need to know as much as you possibly can about everything was anything and everything can and will pop up. So prepare yourself. All right, now, so now you've got to this point where you've gone to a few sessions, you're getting ready to do some at-home study. Now, there's a helpful tip for me that I found with wine that you need to buy for studying. The wine you need isn't necessarily the wine you want to drink. And I th honestly think this is crucial, especially for the audience that we've kind of fostered on wine for the people. We've got a very epicurious bond, people that like drinking interesting wines from up and coming producers, um, you know, hands off natural wines, things like that, Australian alternative varieties, all that kind of stuff. It's not gonna come up on your exam. The chances of you trying Petnat or a Victorian Sangiovese, a skin contact Austrian Gruner, that's so unlikely and probably not even a chance of even popping up in your exam. That is outside the general world of wine. You're trying to understand the typical wines that come from each of these regions. Avoid your cool independent bottle shops, at least for your study purposes. You're gonna be wandering through the shelves of where most people buy their wines. Supermarkets markets, your big discounters, you're going to be buying run-of-the-mill Chianti, you're going to be buying a Muscadet, South African Shannon, Lambrusco, that's what you'll need to be getting your head around. And to be honest, it's also really enlightening as you'll uncover the real standard of wine. You, and to be honest, you'll probably find some bargains along the way too. It also means the next time you do drink the wines that you love, it won't actually feel like study. Now, speaking of studying, there are a stack of tools that are going to make your life so much easier. Use technology to your advantage and get some great apps to make your life a lot simpler. A flashcard app is really helpful. Things like Chegg or Cram, I found them really helpful. A notation app like Evernote, that's really helpful. Great way to kind of compile all of your written tasting notes so it's all in one kind of section so you can always go back and read them. 
And of course, you know, something that I haven't really explored, you can use AI to your advantage. For me personally, I find the routine of writing everything way, works way better in my brain, so I've kind of avoided AI. So if using AI is helpful for you, definitely explore that. Those are the tools that I've found work really well for me. There's heaps of tools out there depending on the way you like to learn. There's always something new out there too. So definitely have a look into using some apps to help you study. Hopefully that's given you the best tools possible to pass. But when it does come to exams, I think it's really important to know that failing isn't actually the end of the world. Failing an exam is normal. Most people I actually speak to who have completed the diploma, they've at least failed one of the units. I myself have failed a, a couple of times because I haven't written my theory in a way that suits the examiner. I've got too cocky in tasting exams. And sometimes there were set exams, they're really fucking hard and the you know, examiners really just like to fuck with you. So it's okay to work really, really hard and not quite nail it. The course isn't meant to be easy and it's not easy. It's not easy at all. So take a fail grade in your stride, work on your weaknesses. Luckily, the course is passable. It's invariably run by people who have completed the diploma. So use those people to your advantage. There are de Poisset teachers that are at your disposal. There's even masters of wine that'll be running your course. Speak to them. They are invaluable resources. Ask questions in class uh, about what to do, what to avoid. Listen to their advice. They've done it before. They can pass on the knowledge to you. They're not going to judge your questions. They want you to pass. And that's kind of about it for as much as I know about how to pass a deployment. As I said, I haven't passed it yet. So hopefully this is what's worked for me so far. That's a bit of info for you guys to kind of mull over if you do want to do the course. If anyone has any study tips, please like let me know. Get in the comments, do the whole thing because I certainly need them. And probably later down the track, we'll dive into the different units, what worked for me, and also just some of the interesting things that I've found whilst studying this course. So that'll be about it. And we'll speak to you next time. Thank you.